tell the world that I'm coming home. Right? I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Tell the world that I'm coming home. I don't know. Warriors are pulling Jonathan Kaminga from trade talks, according to Jake Fisher of Yahoo Sports. The Golden State Warriors have removed Jonathan Kaminga from trade discussions following his recent surge in play. He's like a 25 points per game scorer. And Kaminga's future with uh, the Warriors had been uncertain this past offseason. Supposedly they're packaging him with their the pick that they took put a Jemski with to the King to the Pistons. My apology, the Pistons for the seventh pick, but they you know did anything happen? And then supposedly he had reportedly lost faith in January playing for Steve Kerr. But now Kaminga was supposedly almost got a guy that they, the Pacers really wanted, and now. They're like, nah, buddy. Guess what, Kaminga? You're staying. All right. Last 10 games is a guy who's averaged, listen to this, 21.6 rebounds and two assists. The Warriors this season, it's been a dumpster for them, 12th in the West. They're, well, I think, I think at this point, they're six games behind the sixth seed, one game behind the 10th seed. They're the 10th best offense, 22nd best defense. They're minus 0.2 net rating, which is 16th. And they're 37.6 from three, which is league average. But if you look over here, this is a team, yeah, 28 points a night from Curry, 18 from Thompson. Kaminga, obviously on the season's 15, 12 and a half from Wiggins. It's been bad, but he's actually been really, been better this year. Sarge has been good. Then you got yourself a, a bunch of guys that I think definitely are... I think you know stoked but i like that like have been good role players draymond green's been solid when he has played been suspended a lot Mo moody's been good but like there's no one worth trading for that's the whole problem there's no one that they should trade for that's the problem that's the problem supposedly chris paul and wiggins are available for trade but i just don't think there's anyone really available just wait till the offseason guys Yo, what's going on, guys? And we're hearing specifically that the Warriors are gauging the trade market of Andrew Wiggins and Mr. Chris Paul. Now, this is coming from my co-worker, Mr. Michael Scotto. What we're hearing that Scotto, in a conversation with Bobby Marks in a previous Hoops Type Cat podcast, agreed that Andrew Wiggins is a trade candidate and that a team like Dallas has always liked him and they're currently trying to upgrade the position at the three, a deal of like Maxi Cleva and Garrett Grant Williams, maybe Jay and Hardy in a pick could get that deal done. But Houston, Michael Scott floats out, is a team that has starting caliber upgrades available. Jack Landell, Jay Sean Tate, Jeff Green, and Victor Oladipo as a salary filler to get Wiggins, especially with the picks that they have available. And there isn't any specific team, but basically every team would have interest in Andrew Wiggins at this time, essentially, as they view him as somebody they could buy low. He, during the 2022 playoff run, was a 3 and D wing, one of the best defenders in the league, shutting down Jason Tatum, Luka Doncic, being 40% of his threes, one of the better wing defenders. And that got him a four-year extension with a $24 million average. And he's having the worst year of his career so far. And one of the bigger problems, I mean, obviously his ball handling has always been something to have a question about, but with the second apron really coming into effect, you look around the league is what happened to him this year? Why is he struggling? And does it have to do with stuff going back behind the scenes? And if you look back at last year in the playoffs, he broke his ribs and he's wearing a flak jacket through game six. And when they were eliminated, he told Scotto that they were, and Eric Slater, that he was going through a two month recovery. He wasn't healthy until the start of training camp. He couldn't play basketball with broken ribs. So that took him out of his rhythm. His handle became really loose. His shooting numbers are the worst that he have ever been. And it kind of snowballed into this terrible year for him. So besides Dallas, there's been rumors that Charlotte with Gordon Hayward's contract and even maybe Cleveland, who's always been desperate to have a three, and Indiana have been the teams that have been rumored. Indiana could package Buddy Heald with Obi Toppin to get the deal done. Cleveland has Karis LeVert, Max Struess, and a few other contracts they could go ahead and get that deal done, as well as Jared Allen. I don't think Garland or would even be considered. Charlotte, I'd like to say again, a a Gordon Hayward package. I doubt it'd be something around Kyle Lowry and picks. So that one's interesting. But now shifting over to Chris Paul, you know, he's a guy, 39 years old, and he's expected to return around the All-Star break or after. And there's part of the reason they trade for him was the optionality. Part of the appeal was his contract was unguaranteed and the fact that they were able to get off the Jordan pool. So how are they going to duck the second apron with all the money they still owe? 
moving forward. And there's an idea that, you know, I think they have not been good enough to believe that there's some fix out there to make him a title commander under. As you mentioned, Paul's played pretty well for them. He has value, his contract has value, not only as an expiring deal, but a deal that could this summer be used as a $30 million non-guaranteed trade chip. So you could release that and sign him back on a lower number, or you could also use that as a trade chip this offseason. So I think there's a lot of plays, things that work that the, the Warriors could 